Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today we are back in the garage because it is a beautiful day, although it's pretty late in the day, so it's kind of dark and it's only going to get darker. But I'm hoping the project we are doing today in the garage takes us no time at all because we're doing something from Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Yep. And we're doing the cover photo. That's right, straight off the runway. We are going to make their plate rack. It should be real easy as far as Better Homes and Gardens is concerned. It says do it yourself. It also says 28 ideas under $20. Well, I looked at those ideas and unless you wanna stamp paint onto a tea towel, this project is not $20. This, this plate rack does not fall into the 28 ideas for under $20. I'll tell you what right now, Better Homes and Gardens, all of your 28 ideas for under $20 are stupid. No one's doing them. Like this one, for example. Taking a lampshade, wrapping it in thread so it creates a rectangular grid. Like, no one wants to do that, Better Homes and Gardens, seriously. Or this one. Take felt and glue it to a pillow that you already have. Nobody wants to do that either. What we do want to do is the plate rack, and we're doing it today in this DIY Wednesday. What I liked about this plate rack, A, it's cute, and B, it says, build this plate rack in a weekend. And I was like, all right, I've got a weekend. Let's see how easy it is, Better Homes and Gardens. Now, while I personally don't need a plate rack, what I like about it is you don't have to put plates in it. I'm actually going to use it for my makeup eyeshadow palettes. There are a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I just don't wanna use because I like collecting them, but there are also a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I just don't use because they're under my bathroom sink and if they're not out on the counter, I forget I have them. So I thought this would be a good idea for me to use for makeup palettes, but for you, you could use it for plates, you could use it for tchotchkes, artwork, whatever. The cool thing about this, Better Homes and Gardens gives you a cut list. So if you don't have any spare wood around and you don't have any saws, all you need to do is go to the Lowe's or the Home Depot or wherever you get wood because basically what you're using is one by four wood to make this whole thing. So if you go to the wood aisle, grab a bunch of one by four pieces, you then can go to the assistance please at the wood cutting area. You'll go to the wood cutting area, ring that little bell, hand the guy your cut list and say, yeah, I need two one by fours that are 45 inches long, two one by fours that are 43 and a half inches long, four one by fours that are 43 and a half inches long, four one and a half by one that are 43 inches long, and then three one by half by ones that are 45 inches long. They'll cut it all right there for you. You load it in your car, it's manageable. Nothing's longer than 45 inches. You get yourself some wood glue. If you've got a nail gun, great. If not, little finishing nails and a hammer. If not, little baby screws and a screw gun. Boom, project built, plate rack done. Cover photo demolished. So I, as you know, I'm a collector of the scrap wood. I took a bunch of scrap wood pieces and I made them the sizes that they needed to be. I chopped them on my chop saw. I also ran them through my table saw. They were thicker than one inch. So I've got all my pieces here and they're all varying degrees of wood. I've got some old fence board wood from that uh, OSH display that we made those under the bed storage. That's this wood. Oh, these are all made out of pallet wood. So they're all different. But for me personally, I don't mind it because I'm going to end up painting this entire thing white anyways. I cut them down to exactly the right lengths and widths, just as if I had driven to the Lowe's handed the guy my cut sheet and then loaded him in my car and came home. So now all we have to do is follow the directions. I mean, from the picture, you can kind of get what you need to do. And there aren't actually very many directions. Determine the size of the rack. I used the exact measurements that they provided, but if you wanted it smaller than 45 inches wide, you would just adjust 
your cut sheet according to where you want it to hang it. So basically we just glue and nail the plate stops to the front of each shelf. We measure and mark the placement of our shelves. We nail those in, we put the sides on, we put the top and bottom on, and then we hang it on a wall with studs in it and voila we're done. So yeah, I think we can knock this out. They say a weekend, I say, I wanted to say, I say an hour. Obviously it's gonna take a little longer than an hour, but I say not that much longer. So let's get to going. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So let's get going. So why did I wanna do this project? Well, number one, I got this magazine from Santa in my stocking for Christmas. So I definitely wanted to do something out of here. And I also wanted to see how easy it was to follow their directions and if it made sense and if we could in fact build it in less than the amount of time they said it would take us. Um, our first step, they want us to nail our plate stops to the front of each shelf using our finishing nails. Now we have four shelves that are 43 and a half inches long and we have the plate stops that are exactly 43 and a half inches long. All we're gonna do is do what they say, nail it. I Finally got my quarter cable air compressor gun to work. I had to replace an O-ring. It was a simple O-ring replacement. So I did that and now it works great. And now as I'm saying it works great because I only tested it once, it probably won't work now that I actually want to nail the project together. But if it doesn't, don't worry. I bought another one. <laughs> I plan on taking it back, but I wanted to have a backup just in case. If you don't have one of these handy dandy nail guns, do not fret. You can still do this project. It's not gonna be as speedy for you because you're either gonna have to use your manual, just your guns to hammer in your finishing nails, or you're gonna have to use like a little screw gun. But I happen to have this and I love it and it's quick and it's easy, so I'm going to use it. So. I have my shelf like this. This is my plate stop and it needs to rest on top of this board so that if you do lean a plate, it doesn't slip off. You're gonna take your shelf and nail from the bottom up your plate stop to the top of that shelf. This is my shittiest piece of wood right here. I want that to be the highest shelf with this top up. Now, could you wood glue this and then nail it? Yep, you sure could. Is it necessary to wood glue and nail? Nah, not so much. But what you do wanna make sure is, because your plate stops are a half an inch by one inch. So you just wanna make sure that you put them all on exactly the same way. So I'm gonna make sure that all of mine are tall and skinny rather than short and fat. I do wanna tack it in from the top down real quick just to make sure. Oh, sweet ass sweet, hell yeah. Because I don't want this to move around on me. So I'm gonna do two tacks, one on each end, then I'll flip it over and go from the bottom up. You basically just wanna make sure you're even Steven all across, press down and boom. Now I'm gonna flip it and go in from the bottom up, making sure everything's lined up. Sweet. Now you just do that three more times because you have four shelves, easy. Okay, all day when I was prepping my wood, the neighborhood was quiet. And now when I'm actually going to put something together in front of a camera, the kids in this neighborhood are loud and proud. They're screaming everywhere. Their parents are screaming at them. Be prepared. So our shelves are done. Our plate stops are tacked onto our shelves. What's next, Better Homes and Gardens? Let's see. Measure and mark placement of shelves on side rails to help determine shelf placement. So they went from top down 12, then 12, then 12, and then there's a tiny little baby shelf that's six inches. I dig that plan. I'm gonna make it just like this. So our side rails are 45. What we wanna do is take our side rails, match them up, and we're going to measure top down 12, 12, 12. This one will be six. Tape measure pen ruler. I'm gonna say this is my top. Put a little T there for top. I'm gonna go 12, 12, 12, 12, just like they told me to. And you wanna mark and measure both boards at the same time so you draw a line 
straight across both boards so that you know, even if you were off a little tiny baby hair and it was like 12 in one line or 11 in however many lines, at least you know your lines on both boards when you take your ruler and run it across are in the same location. Oh, you gotta love those kids. So one shelf, two shelf, three shelf, bottom shelf. Here, boom, boom, boom. Done. So far, so easy. I'm telling you what. With two inch nails, nailing from the outside through the side rails, we put our shelves. So we want to take our shelves and attach them to our side rails. I am going to use wood glue and nails in this situation. This, I know I want this, my shittiest board to be my top so you can't see it that well. Basically take this and put it here. So every bottom of board is gonna go to the line. We're just gonna glue this and then we're gonna tack it with our little finishing nails from the outside going in. Now this might be a little difficult because I'm only one person with only two hands. I don't really know how that's gonna work. So let's try it. What we do know is we're gonna use wood glue, first of all. Now, could you forego the wood glue? Yeah, but I wouldn't trust the shelf depending on how heavy your objects are that you wanna sit on it. These little finishing nails, they're tiny little babies. If you're putting something real weighty, like an heirloom plate, I would wood glue and then nail it in. So. Let's do that. Wood glue, wood glue, come on. Perfect, perfect. Line this up here. We wanna make sure we're super straight, super secure. Now I'm gonna hold that firmly in place and hopefully get at least one nail in there. Not really looking, oh geez. Stay right there, don't move. Did we do it? We did it. Okay, good. For extra security, I'm gonna take this off. Gently, 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 and then stick some more nails here. Make sure I'm straight. I know, I know. Okay, oh shit. My cord's wrapped around the board. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, I feel better about that. Good. Now that we have the one starter one in, that's the hardest one. The rest of them are gonna be really, really easy. Ooh, that looks good. I'm impressed. Master woodworker right here. Okay, come on, let's do the rest. We're wasting daylight. Hi, I'm in jail. So I basically have my three shelves. I still have my bottom shelf to put on my one side rail. But what I wanna do before I put the bottom shelf on, I'm gonna take this down, then take my other side rail, plop it on top, and boom, 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 turn it over and boom, boom, boom. Because right now in this shelf and this shelf, I only have two finishing nails holding them in. So I wanna be very delicate. Lower this to the floor very gently. Then I'm going to put wood glue, boom, 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 flip this over, line it up, staple down, 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 then flip it over, put more staples in that one, then I'll slap in my bottom one. That's my plan. I'm trying to make it as easy for myself as possible. And you know, this kind of seems that it's the easiest for me. I'm gonna take this side rail that has my lines. Obviously, we gotta try to line it up, make sure that we're good front to back. Yeah, like that's good. Now, as long as I don't move. Boom, now. Okay, shocked me because my uh, quarter cable turns on randomly when it runs out of air pressure. So it's now full, so it's quiet. I have my top shelf in. I just need to line up my bottom shelf. I'm gonna nail that, then go to my center, flip her on over, finish nail the other side, put my bottom shelf in, donezo. I did not line up my front shelf very flush with my side rail, so there's a little tiny bit of an overhang with my shelf. I'll just sand that. That's okay. Pay attention when you're lining up. That's a note to me. Boom, I feel good about that. These are secure. <laughs> These are secure on this side. So let's flip her over. This top shelf I did good. I need to reinforce this one and this one. Yay. Our top is here, this is our bottom. We need to take our last shelf, put glue on either side of that, line it up with our bottom, nail that in. Easy. Running out of wood glue. Oh, come on, seriously? That's, I don't think it's open. It's not. Ooh, nice tight fit, like it. My cuts were money. This is nice and snug. Perfect amundo. Stay. Good. 
It's pretty easy, Better Homes and Gardens. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda digging it. Now we're really secure, because we've got four cross beams in. Whew, shit's not going anywhere. Moving right along. What's next, Better Homes and Gardens? They only have seven steps to this, so it's pretty good. So we have to nail across the back side a nailing strip so that when you're screwing it into your actual wall, you can use those pieces of board to screw into your wall, into the studs of your wall. They have one at the very, very tip top from the inside to inside, just like the shelves. And then they have the other one right underneath the third shelf. These are them. These are cut to 43 and a half, just like the shelves. You know how we put the shelves in this way, like a shelf? This board is gonna go this way, like this in here. Wood glue, wood glue, nail, nail, nail. And since this board is going to be showing, you want the ugliest part next to the wall and it goes to the back, opposite of where your plate strips are. Line her on up, flush, 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 everywhere we look. And nail this puppy in. Flip her over and do the same thing to the other side. Look at how sturdy this thing is. Come on. Now we do the same thing to right underneath the third shelf. And so we're gonna be able to use this board right here to nail into our wall when we hang that. I mean, we are blasting through this. I tell you what, I might need to write a letter to Better Homes and Gardens and say, hell yeah, this was easy. I mean, it is like super dark outside right now, but that's only because it's winter time and it gets dark early. I'm gonna take this right underneath that third shelf. So the third shelf is like basically resting on this. Ooh, nice tight fit, but I might need a hammer and not my hands this time. Oh no, I'm super strong. You are looking good. All right, nail her in. Oh my gosh, it's, so, it's getting sturdier and sturdier by the minute. Done. Okay, we don't have very many pieces of wood left, so I think we're almost done. Step five. Okay, so this is basically, we're putting in these little strips right here to catch our plates or whatever we're putting on here so they don't fall off and fall forward. So we have three of them. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on my saw horses. Ooh. Okay, that's good, right? About five inches up from all shelves, minus the bottom one. They don't have one going across the bottom. They just have one here, here, and here. That's what that's gonna be. Oh my gosh, we're like done. Five inches up. Actually, that's too high to me. I'm gonna go four. I don't really think I need to wood glue it, so I'm just gonna tack it in. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sherry. You know, in like a professional, might get a level, but I think we're fine. Perfect. Good. Now I just do the other sides. Okay, we're done. And I feel like we're done then. Let's see what Better Homes and Gardens says. Oh, step six, fill and sand all nail holes and finish as desired. We sprayed our rack with a clear satin polyurethane. Step seven, hang by driving two wood screws through each nailing strip into wall studs. I told you it wasn't gonna take that long. That is really easy. Especially when you come home with all your wood cut exactly to size, you don't have to get out a saw, you don't have to get shit out. Now, obviously I went super fast because I do have a nail gun, but again, if you didn't, you could drill little pilot holes, you could screw in, you could just get a hammer and finishing nails, not a big deal. It might take you a little bit longer to manually hammer all of these pieces in. I mean, what it take me right now? I feel like it just took an hour to get this whole thing put together because all of our wood pieces were already cut perfectly to size. I am going to sand it, fill it, you know, with wood filler and whatnot. And I do want to paint mine white. That's not going to happen right now because it's pitch black dark out. But for the most part, call this baby done. It looks good. Look at it. It's so cute. You guys, seriously, we have our four shelves with our little plate rails. These will guard anything from falling off our shelves. Our bottom strips will guard anything from falling off our shelves sliding outwards. Nail strip, nail strip. It's huge, by the way. <laughs> so this is 45 inches wide, which is pretty damn huge if you ask me, but I dig it. This is gonna be so cute and we made it in an instant. So I'm just going to sand and paint and hang. Pretty much this puppy is done. <gasps> I'm so excited. Good job, Better Homes and Gardens. Good job. Okay, are you guys ready for it? Because our 
Better Homes and Gardens weekend project is done. And it's looking pretty cute, I must say. Get ready, because here it comes. The final reveal. Dun, 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 dun. Look at it. It is so cute. I love it. Now, clearly, this is supposed to be a plate rack. It's supposed to hold plates, but you don't have to. We don't follow no stinking rules around here on This Is Real Life. We do what we want and we turn things into what we need. Therefore, I made a little makeup shelf out of my plate holder. Okay, so no. For real though, props to the BHG. They did not lie. This plate rack took a weekend, really a day. It was done. I just had to wait for the paint to dry for Pete's sakes. Yeah, they did good. Now I used all scrap wood. This to me was free. I even used paint that I already had in the garage. I don't think that the wood needed for this would cost a fortune. If you just get one long run of four inch wide, it's one by four and have that cut down at the Lowe's or the Home Depot, maybe, okay, two long runs, but I don't think that would be that expensive. Plus you could just use pine, even if you're gonna stain it. Pine still looks cute stained, but really if you're gonna paint it, pine faux show. So I don't think it would be that expensive and it doesn't take that long and it's awesome. Now, just because I'm holding makeup palettes and you know, memories, doesn't mean you can't actually hold plates. I mean, I could run downstairs and get a plate right now, but I don't feel like it. But trust me, you can hold plates. So if you had a wall space in your kitchen or in your dining room, where you wanted to display like your fine china, then yeah, totally. Or anything, you know what I was thinking too? Kids room, okay. You guys are gonna be like, she's fucking brilliant. This in a kid's room for their books. Just hang it low and then all their books and they won't fall because of this little piece of wood. They won't fall forward and you can hang it low enough to where they could reach it themselves. And what else is cool is that the profile is very narrow. It only comes four inches off the wall. So in a tight space behind a door even, this would totally work for super little money, super duper little effort. It's kind of amazing. I'm kind of impressed with Better Homes and Gardens, not gonna lie, because I was really bagging on the rest of that magazine. This made up for all those glue felt onto a pillow and call it a craft for under $20 or stamp some kitchen towels with some stamps. No, this though, it's pretty awesome. You gotta admit, not even a whole day. I can't get over how fast it was to make. Once we had all the wood cut, which you'll have done at the Home Depot and the Lowe's, you just wait for them to do it. They'll do it. You load up your cart, you pay for it. Then you load up your car and then you drive it home and then you glue it and nail it together and then you're done. That's not even a day. You're looking at a half a day. If it's nice out, you could paint it that afternoon or stain it that afternoon, wake up the next morning and hang it and you're done. It kind of doesn't get much better than that. For something this big and this great and this much storage, seriously, I love it. And I hope you loved it too, because if you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Make sure you share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.